in the previous two Bible studies, we've been talking a lot about wisdom. And this will be our last Bible study of this particular short series on wisdom. Uh, we first studied about wisdom, about asking God for wisdom. Our uh, second study was just about uh, the consequences of not using wisdom or just neglecting wisdom. In this final study today, we're going to look at a particular example of one individual who went through a situation where they were they were given wisdom. And we're going to look at what happened uh, when God gave them instruction. Um, but this will just be like a third part to that wisdom series that we've been doing. And just a different example, another scenario of how wisdom can be applied and how wisdom can be asked for. That's going to come out of the book of 2 Samuel chapter 5. It's going to be about one of my favorite people in the Bible, one of my favorite people uh, in Israel's history, and that's David. Uh, David was just anointed to be king over Israel. And of course, Saul was the king of Israel. He was the first king of Israel. Uh, the people demanded God to give him a king, and finally God blessed them with a king and gave him what they asked for, gave him Saul. But Saul didn't turn out to be the king that they were hoping for. He started off on a good foot, started off on a good note, started off being a really good king. But later on into his reign, his heart started to change and he started to turn away from God. And it also started to reflect in how he ruled over his people. Nonetheless, because Saul was such a horrible king at that point in time, God chose to raise up another king to come and replace Saul and remove Saul from the th throne. And that person was David. Of course, David was... Uh, he was a shepherd of sheep. He was very young at the time, um, but God knew his heart and his heart uh, longed to do the will of the Lord. So because God knew his heart, God chose David to be king over his people because he knew that God, I'm sorry, because he knew that David seek to do his will. And that's the kind of leader he wanted for his people. So again, Second Samuel chapter 5. Uh, David was just anointed king over Israel, and David's going to be in a particular situation, and he uh, displayed very great wisdom as well in this particular scenario, and it's one we can apply to our lives as well today. So 2 Samuel chapter 5, starting at verse 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. But David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephraim, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. So we see David in his new position, his new title, his new status of being king of Israel. And as he's been elected king, uh, one of Israel's uh, prime enemies during that time period was the Philistines. And the Philistines were just enemies of God. They served false gods and served idol gods. And they always rivaled against Israel. A lot of times they would want to try to attack Israel to take, take away their possessions, um, just to inflict harm over them whenever they had an opportunity to do so. And them being the enemy of the Israelites... When they heard news of a new king being elected, like, okay, they got a new king. We're about to go attack them. We're about to hit them where it hurts. We're about to hurt them. We're about to uh, destroy what they have and take whatever we want from them. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, when David uh, caught wind of this, it says in verse 19, he did something very important. David inquired of the Lord, meaning David asked God what to do. He asked God, shall I go up against the Philistines? Just because your enemy want to go up against you does not necessarily mean you should go up against them. Just because they want war does not mean you should always bring it to them. David asked God, should I go up against the Philistines? And he asked him a second question. He said, will you give them into my hand? So number one, should I, should I battle them? And number two, will you give me the victory? And then and the Lord said, David, go up. I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. What awesome confirmation of approval. What awesome affirmation of saying, if you go into this battle, you're going to have the victory. You believe in me. You trust in me. You ask me for blessings. And guess what? I'm going to bless you in this battle. And um, looking at verse 20, going after that, it says, And David came to Baal Param, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breaking flood. Therefore, the name of this of that place is called Baal Perium, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And the Philistines left their idols there, and David and his men carried them away. 
oftentimes uh, God ain't instructed uh, the leaders of his people to not only to remove um, the idols uh, from the land, but also to destroy them. Um, and God told uh, David that, hey, if you go up against the Philistines, I most certainly will give you the victory. And David was even in awe. He was like, wow, the Lord has broken through my enemies like a breaking flood. And in my mind, as, as I imagine it, I just imagine just a flood of water coming, almost like a tsunami, a tsunami coming. And it's, it's difficult because there's really no way you can go when when the tsunamis come. You can try to take shelter, but really sometimes there's it's really no place to go unless you can get to a very high point. But even then, you know, you're still at danger of the bottom structure of wherever you are collapsing. Um, but but more so just thinking about God, God's will being like a breaking flood, like a flood, like a flood when it first breaks out. You know, when the water's raging and it's it's very powerful and it can really demolish everything in its way. And you just think about that being on people, that it, the Lord was like a breaking flood on the, those who were against him, those who were against his people. And God gave David the victory. Now, you might say, OK. Well, we already know, we've already covered this about asking God for wisdom and God giving wisdom. Okay, that's great. But we're going to look at something else here in verse 22. It says, And the Philistines came up yet again and spread out in the valley of Reprium. The Philistines just couldn't get enough. You got to give them, you got to give them props for being very persistent. They were a persistent enemy of Israel and they just wouldn't stay now. They would always want to strike back and fight back. And they were a long time enemy and rival of the Israelites for a very long time. But they just did not want to stay defeated. They came back and they wanted some more. Verse 23. And when David inquired of the Lord, he asked God again, what should I do? He said, you shall not go up. Go around to their rear and come against them opposite the balsam trees. And when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then rouse yourself. For then the Lord is going out before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. And David did as the Lord commanded him and struck down the Philistines from Geba to Gezer. So this was very important. The very first time that they went up for battle, God told David, yeah, you go up to the Philistines and I'll give you the victory. David inquired of the Lord. The Lord told David, okay, you go up against the Philistines, I'll give you the victory. So again, the enemy came back. And what a lot of us would have done in that situation was we would say, okay, we already know what to do. I've seen this situation before. Uh, I'm already familiar with this. I'm just going to do what I've done the last time. I'm going to do what was successful last time and that should give me the victory. Now, nah, what you should do last time is what you did the first time, and that's inquire of the Lord. Now, the action may be different this time around, but David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord gave him instruction. And instead of going around and just going up to him and attacking from the front or from the side or whatever the case may be, God told David, do not go up. Don't you go up. Go around to their rear. Go around to the rear and come up against them opposite the balsam trees. And he said, wait till you hear the sound of marching in the tops of those balsam trees. And then he told them, then rouse yourself for then the Lord is going out before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. Verse 25 says, and David did as the Lord commanded him and struck down the Philistines from Geba to Gezer. And that's a very important example of why it is so important for us to pray and ask God for wisdom. It's so important for us to pray and ask God for instruction because the instruction may be different each and every single situation or scenario. In every single case, in every single situation that you go up against, you want to have God's blessing. You want to have God's guidance. You want to have God's favor. You want to have God's instruction. Lord, what should I do? And what's most important is also to do is wait till you hear from the Lord. Don't make a decision too quick. Don't rush into it. Don't assume you know what's best. Don't go off your impulse, your impulse feelings or impulse reactions. Don't go off what seems immediate. But just wait for the Lord and let him direct your path. Let him direct you and guide you. Let him give you guidance and instruction. Too many times we've seen situations where we already say, well, I've seen this before. I'm familiar with this. I already know what to do. You know, I have already have experience in this. I've already uh, I have knowledge about this. I know what to do already. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Pray about it still. Pray about it still and hear from the Lord and make your move at that point. Because the instruction might be different this time. What will give you success may be different from what happened last time. 
And that's what's so crucial. And David went on to prove himself to be a very faithful king. Now, of course, David was a man like everybody else. He's human like everybody else. So he was not without sin. David did still sin. And David uh, made some very poor choices during his time as king. But for the most part, for the majority of his reign, for his, uh, the majority of his reign, for the majority of his time being king, David was a very faithful king. He was very faithful to God. He's very faithful to people. What made David, if you continue reading through uh, 2 Samuel and you get into even some judges, uh, you will see, maybe not in judges, but definitely in 2 Samuel. You keep going through 2 Samuel, I meant 1 Kings. 2 Samuel, you get into 1 Kings, um, you're going to see that David is going to be a very successful king and mainly because of his belief and faithfulness in God. He always looked to God for instruction. He always prayed to God and said, Lord, what should I do? Where should I go? Lord, now what? And during that particular time, I was saying this, you know, Saul was after David for a long time period. When when God had told Saul, hey, you're going to have to step down from your king, step down from your throne. You're going to step down from reigning over the people of Israel. He didn't take that too well. So when he learned that David was going to take his place, Saul considered David to be an enemy, but it wasn't. David's doing that got Saul out of being king. It was Saul's ruling. It was what he did, his actions, his disobedience to God that got him out of that position. And when God put the new person up, he was like, oh no, this is this is my enemy. He wants to take my place. You took yourself out of that position and of course the Lord replaced you. And then at that particular point in time again, from that point on, Saul made many different attempts to go out of David's life. He made several different attempts to try to uh, capture David to kill David and he was unsuccessful every single time because God's hand was over David and God gave him wisdom in many different situations to be able to escape Saul when he was trying to pursue him but it's a very interesting story uh, very interesting uh, lessons and so many lessons throughout uh, Samuel the, the books of Samuel and the books of Kings um, I would encourage you to go through and read and study those uh, but again uh, David was very successful as king because he inquired of the Lord. We can be very successful servants of God if we also inquire of the Lord. We can be very successful in whatever we do if we inquire of the Lord. We look to God to direct our steps. It's not in man to direct his own steps. Look to the Lord to direct our steps. And then when he give us our marching orders, we go on our way. Sometimes the feelings are going to change. Sometimes if you just wait on the Lord, he'll give you a different perspective. Sometimes you might think that the door says enter, but if you look to, to God and inquire the Lord, he might give you a different direction to get you to the same destination. And it ends up being a better path to that destination. But always inquire of the Lord. Be like David. David's going to go on to be a very successful commander and leader of God's people. He's a very successful commander and leader of God's army. He was just overall a really great guy. And again, mainly credit has to be given to his faith in God, his reliance and dependence on God. We need to also rely and depend on God in everything that we do. We need to stop trying so hard to do things. And instead of trying, we need to start relying, rely on God to direct us, help us, to give us um, the, the, our means of victory, to give us a way of success, allow God to open our eyes and have us and, and see with eyes of wisdom. Because sometimes in most cases, again, when we see things initially for the first time or we see things or we look at things or we try to analyze the situation and we don't always see so clearly. A lot of times we don't always see with the right type of clarity and just see the situation and we should see it. You know, a typical example may be uh, when it comes to when you're angry, when you're upset. You know, when something gets under your skin and it gets you upset and gets you angry, you know, the Bible tells us that the anger of God is not, I'm sorry, the Bible tells us that the anger of man does not bring on the righteousness of God. That's why the Bible teaches us to, when you are angry, it says to sin not. Be angry, but sin not. What it's, again, teaching us and instructing us to do is that in your anger, do not sin. It's not a sin or a transgression against God to be angry or be upset or be frustrated. But in that frustration, in that anger, do not sin. When you're upset, don't curse. When you're upset, don't go out and want to harm people. When you're upset, don't say things that you don't mean. When you're upset, don't want to go out and do uh, do harm to others but when you upset the bible says to sin not and that's and that's wisdom the wisdom is okay now that i am upset and i'm frustrated now what am i going to do you find different ways of how you can not sin 
and you find different ways of how you can use that anger and use it to do good. Let it motivate you. Let it inspire you. Let it encourage you. You just frame it in a different way. And that's the wisdom that God gives in many different situations. In so many situations throughout scripture, you will see as you continue to read and study that God gives instruction that helps you to better maneuver through life. He gives you instruction to help you get through the difficulties that life brings. And life will bring many different difficulties of many different kinds. You know, the old folks always say, just keep on living. And if you keep on living, life is going to hit you in ways you just can't anticipate. And when it does, when you look for, well, I've never seen this before. What do I do? Look to God's word. And he'll give you instruction. He'll tell you what to do. He'll show you what to do. He'll command you and where to go. And he'll give you confidence and guidance and give you security of the direction to go in. So have faith and trust in the Lord. Seek the Lord in every single situation. As we've been saying and what we've been studying, ask God for wisdom and allow God to direct you. When he does give you instruction or direct you in the way to go, don't question it. Don't second guess it. Don't doubt it. Don't go up against it or want to rival against it. When God gives the way, the best thing we can do is walk that path. Think about back to Moses when God parted the Red Sea for him and for the people of Israel. You know, again, you remember the situation that the people were behind Moses. They were upset with him. They were furious with Moses because they say, how could you lead us to this body of water? We, we, we ran away from the Egyptians and we escaped the Egyptians and we followed you. We trusted in you and you led us to water. We're doomed. We're trapped. And God made a way where there wasn't a way. And when those people got, saw that way being made, I'm sure they were in absolute awe because they said, wow, I didn't see that. I couldn't see it. I just couldn't see it. But God made a way. God can make ways that we cannot make. God can make ways we can't even see. Things we can't even imagine God can make come to life. And that's why God always said, and he said before, I believe in the book of Isaiah, that your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts, says the Lord. That you're not me. The Lord is above us. He's wise in us. He's smarter than us. He's the creator of all things. He created us. He created the world that we live in. This earth that's spinning right now on his axis, he created it. And in the scheme of things, the Lord is all powerful and almighty. So with that being said, the best thing we can do in all humbleness, in all wisdom, and all knowledge that we've been given to just submit to his will and seek to do his holy will. I pray this Bible study and the previous ones about wisdom have been beneficial to you. I hope and pray that you can use them to uh, just get more knowledge, get more understanding, and just uh, that you decide to yourself you want to be wiser. That in you deciding to be wiser, you seek to do things a little differently. You seek God's way of doing things. You you put a, put a, put aside your way of doing things instead of now you start seeking what's God's way of doing things. What would God do in this situation? What does God instruct us to do in this situation more so? And then throughout the Bible, you go through the New Testament, you will see in, in the New Covenant that's been given, and God gives many different instructions about how we should handle different situations. It's already been written. It's already been written. So again, I uh, just hope this Bible study has been beneficial to you. I pray that you continue to see wisdom. Our wisdom is supreme. And I ask and hope and pray that this thing has been a blessing to you. And I want to continue to encourage you to continue to fight the good fight. And hang in there. Continue to do your best. See the Lord in every single situation. And surely he will provide. And I thank you for your time.